Hey Survivor Geeks, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my Survivor Puzzle app and my merchandise store. The links are below in the description. Such a thing as loyalty in the game of Survivor. <laughs>I tried everything to live a faithful, Mormon, straight lifestyle. And when I finally made that decision to live as a proud gay man, that's when my world really opened up for me. And I'm now an elementary school principal, bringing diversity, equity, inclusion into my community. Being gay in a very conservative environment have taught me grit, mental tenacity. Those are the attributes that you need to have on Survivor to be successful. At the time of Survivor China airing, I didn't know who I was. And watching Todd play his game as someone who had been raised Mormon, this is who I want to be. So I am so happy to be here playing Survivor season 45. Like, let's go. She was just a heartthrob I may or may not be platonically in love with. I wanted to come on Survivor from the first day that I watched, purely from a psychological standpoint. It was fascinating. But I don't want to play like the last two therapists that were on this show. It was like, well, I'm a therapist, so I'm gonna be able to read people. And it's like, I don't want to underestimate any of the people around me just because I got my master's in counseling. Like, I'm not counseling out here. When I was 20 years old, I got sober after about a five year drinking career. Everything that I've learned through my recovery has absolutely prepared me for Survivor. It's just the tools of how to deal with life. Let go of the things that are out of my control, but absolutely control the things that are so that I can sit here today and be comfortable in my own sweaty skin. And it's forged this sense of self that I think is gonna keep me going. I definitely been working out, you know, this is not like that huge, but for me, this is a big deal. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think when people hear the word nurse, like they think of like these nice ladies who like give you saltines and ginger ale when your tummy hurts. My job could not be farther from that. I've worked in the ER, you know, I worked through COVID, I work in critical care now, and I've been working in places that require you to be calm, adaptable, rational, and emotionally intelligent under tons of stress and chaos. People want to underestimate nurses and think we're just wiping butts, like fine, like that's to their peril in this game and I'm hoping to kind of exploit that. I cannot believe that a lesbian has never won the show. I absolutely intend to be the first. <laughs> there is a struggle that comes with finding your identity and being authentic out here goes a, a long way. That's what gets people to trust you. Want to be a Latina female winner on Survivor. So I was born in Cuba. Being an immigrant, I have grit. Started working at like 14 and I've been hustling my entire life. Back in 2019, I met my business partner. While we were packing to go on our trip to Bali, we couldn't find any backpack that we like. Let's just make our own backpack and it's still going strong, thank God. <laughs> I think someone will look at me and just be like, oh, she's like a pretty face and she doesn't like to get down and dirty, but I'll get dirty like any day out here. <laughs> We're not here to look pretty. We're here to win. I hope to be remembered as someone who cared about the people around her. I'm going to be that person that sits next to you and people don't forget how you make them feel. I've always been someone who signs up for things that scared me. I thrive <laughs> in the unknown. <laughs> I will contribute to the tribe. I'm actually not sure. I, I hope I have something. It's your guess is as good as mine of what I'm going to contribute. The hardest part of the game is going to be controlling my anxiety and my worries. You know, I am a very neurotic person. and I don't want to spend the whole time I'm here worrying. My girlfriend supplied me with my strategy and it was be yourself, make people laugh and you'll be fine. Everybody in my life knows that this is my favorite thing in the world. I've been sending in videos for this before I was even eligible to do so. When I was 11, 12, 13, and I made it my goal the last 15 years to get on this island. I recognize Survivor as an opportunity to get outside of my comfort zone. I didn't grow up a very outdoorsy kid. I prefer my room and my TV and my air conditioning and everything that goes on here is just so not me. But in order to be the person that I want to be, I need Survivor. I want to be the person that Survivor can turn me into. 
scared of bugs. Um, I get really sweaty. I hate the sand. I sunburn super easily. I could just keep going. And in the game of Survivor, you watch people give in to their emotions. My experiences as an investment analyst have really enabled me to separate those short-term emotions from my long-term goals. I was told coming into this process that my personality was very similar to Cass's. Uh, I thought they were talking about Cassidy. They were talking about chaos, Cass. I do think that Cass, in a lot of ways, does inspire me in the game. I'm an outspoken, more aggressive female. I get irritated when I'm surrounded by people who think that they're better than me, but I'll slowly chip away at people and they'll start to see me for who I really am. I had been in a relationship with the same person for nearly a decade. I've been at the same job for six years. Oh man, I I'm getting a little boring. My desire to really challenge myself and to come out of it a more interesting, more lived person. Hey, you're gonna be stranded on an island? I was like, Mom, it's fine, I'm an adult. I am a musician, a gym owner, and an entrepreneur, all of the above. Ever since I was six, though, I started Tai Chi. I've gotten a chance to compete in competitions as a martial artist. I'm now a world champion at what we call push hands. I was adopted so a year and a half ago. I did Ancestry. I just wanted to figure out what my nationality was. And these weird things started popping up like father, biological sister, biological brothers, whole family I've never even known about. I've had a chance to visit them and I started crying because that was the first time I had a moment where I could ever relate to, like, blood. I'm out here pushing myself to be the best me, and I'm gonna do everything possible to get to that W-I-N. I got that notorious Irish whisper. Everyone's gonna hear it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a lawyer, but like, I also am a bartender. I'm teaching theater to kids. I don't entrench myself entirely in one world. It pains me to say I'm a 26 year old lawyer living with my 85 year old grandmother, you know? I'm mooching a little bit. Nana does not understand what's going on. She's seen the show, she gets we vote people out. She goes, Jake, they're so mean to each other. What are you gonna be mean? I've always thought of myself kind of like Chris Doherty, winner of Vanuatu. He had this bull thing way, and I think you can be honest, but also, you know, you can still schmooze. If you're not schmoozing, you're not playing. Survivor is a lifelong dream of mine. It's something that I wouldn't have always been able to do. But now, over the past couple of years, I've worked on myself really hard, becoming healthier and, you know, really taking care of myself. And I'm at the best point in my life to play this game. God damn it, I'm going to play it, you know? <laughs> One of the biggest things on my Survivor bucket list is to have that Survivor pizza. So that's like Detroit style in Detroit or, you know, New York style in New York. And of course, Survivor pizza on Survivor. In my day-to-day -day life as a software developer, I spend a lot of time, you know, digging for bugs or optimizing my algorithms to be as efficiently as possible. And in this new 26-day fast-paced era, you constantly have to be looking at every detail and making sure nothing gets by you. That's somewhere that I'm gonna excel. My love for Survivor uh, started a long time ago. It was cool to see, you know, some of the Asian guys like Yao Man or like, you know, Tai. But the one person who inspired me to get out here was David Wright because David Wright was out here on the beaches of Fiji, you know, facing his fears of death in the outdoors and just putting himself out there. And so for me, that was my motivation. No matter what happens at this point, I've made it. And, and that means everything to me. What's your strategy going into the game? Winging it! Mm. <laughs> I've been working in the restaurant industry for 12 years. I literally talk to people and make them think I like them and they give me their money and I don't like them. Not you, you know, <laughs> whoever's watching this, not you, I swear. And I feel like this really prepares me. My social game is gonna be so good. I have a big personality and I think I'm definitely gonna be perceived as like outgoing, maybe a little kooky. And this is just who I am. I am just always chasing the next adventure. I lived out of a van, I backpacked, multiple countries by myself and that's what survivor is to me too just like another portal to follow my path and my inspiration something switches on when it's competition time and i'm just ready to kill this game
we had music for him, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. I just listened to that little thump thump. You guys don't hear it? <laughs> <laughs> like a black huckleberry fin, you know? I was just kind of figuring it out. Whether it was becoming a lifeguard, having never passed swim lessons before, start my own painting business, having never picked up a brush before. I made up a twin brother for myself. And that way, if I was ever, you know, dropping off ladders at 2 a.m., they'd call me and be like, were you at my house in the middle of last night? I'd be like, you try and give your family opportunities, this is what they do. And now I'm in software sales, something else I have no experience in. But I've never been qualified for anything anyways. So why wouldn't I come here and win Survivor as well? I really want to give off this golden retriever energy. Like, he loves games, loves people, energetic. And what they don't realize is that this dog was raised by wolves. It's almost like Cody with Jesse's strategic ability. One of the things I love is great villains. I'm watching Batman, I'm rooting for the Joker. What I love the most is the people who understand it's a game. I'm gonna try and have as much fun and make as many great stories as I can out there. To me, they're gonna see Napoleon Dynamite, they're gonna see the Nutty Professor, they are gonna see a guy who lives at the library. I first started watching Survivor in middle school. I see Cochran out there. I watch him go from mathlete to millionaire. He, if he can do it, you can do it. I am a trivia national champion, mock trial. I'm a state, state finalist twice. I play Scrabble at a competitive level. I've gone on to the University of Pennsylvania, the Ivy League. I have no intention of lying about it and telling someone I'm you know, like a dance major or something stupid like that. I'm smart, I want people to know what my strengths are because I want to telegraph that I'm someone reliable who you can work with. Like my life is just beginning. I'm off to Oxford, I'm off to bright places of academia. And Survivor at this critical moment is a test. It's to show me how far I've come and to validate some of the things I plan to do in the future. Baby, let's go! <laughs> I'm just a dude that was on television for 12 minutes. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Got to 44. We all know what happened there. Jeff does his thing, go! And then I took off running. And bang, I hit my head. Come back. How much of an advantage could I honestly have? We sit back because he's been here for 12 hours. He was concussed for 11 and a half hours of that. But for the 12 hours that I was there, I was the father figure. I need to not be dead. The dad's the one that puts down the rules and all that other stuff. The uncle's who you go talk to and have a conversation with about how dumb your dad's being. But I'm gonna be known as Uncle Bruce out here. I'm not gonna let fear, you know, and the, the past dictate what has happened. Because if I play scared, if I play afraid, if I play any way other than the way that I'm supposed to play this game, why am I here? I alliance members to define loyalty as just unrelenting loyalty <laughs> to the point where it's illogical. <laughs> I work at the top civil rights law firm in the country. My work takes up most of my time. And I really just looked at myself and said, when was the last time you had an adventure? And that's kind of what led me to Survivor. I have to walk through the world as a black queer woman and I am constantly in survival mode because of that. Figure out ways to adapt quickly, to understand different social settings. I was watching Survivor and realizing I can do that on the show. My first strategy is try to charm the pants off everybody. Try to make them feel like I'm the sweet small town girl that really isn't coming in as strategic as I am. Being here means that I'm finally going to get a chance to do something for myself and just really show myself what I'm made of. This was no longer, <laughs> what would he do? What should I do? No, no, this was, oh my gosh, what would I do? I am divorced, single mom. We'd split when I was 39. So now, what am I going to do? About that time, the saying that went around was, she needed a hero, so she became one. But that hit me. She needed a hero. I was like, yes. Four years later of <laughs> many nights at night school while teaching art classes during the day, I passed the bar the first time. I've been a practicing attorney now for five years. Survivor Second Chance Cambodia comes on the TV. And I went, oh my gosh, this just summed up my life. This is my second chance at life. So that's what resonated with me. I've talked a big game getting here. I say, yeah, I'm gonna be the sole survivor. No, I'm serious. Why not me?
If I can find my amber out there, that would be amazing. Survivor is, is truly like the ultimate competition and I think back at like competing in you know the Junior Olympics and playing volleyball and it's like so hard to get those highs anymore. To be on Survivor where people are like competing with everything on the line, I'm just so stoked. You know growing up I was a lot different than how I am now. These muscles and all these things on me now weren't always here. I was very shy, I was very introverted, very quiet. Being able to live that entire introversion, extroversion spectrum to get here, I feel like I can really connect with a huge amount of people. People are gonna look at me and they're immediately gonna be like, oh, that's that's a woo, that's an Aussie. They're not known for being strategists. And I think that's really gonna be one of my key highlights of my game. And if I can hide that, I think I'm gonna have a huge advantage. I'm gonna go around acting as woo as possible and hopefully in the end, like, turn out to be a Tony. People come on the show and they're probably like, I'm not here to make friends, but like, I, I would love to make some friends, why not? A couple of years ago, I took the biggest risk of my life. I had admission to Harvard Law School and I decided to give that up in order to pursue my dreams of being an artist. A lot of people call my music nerd pop because I write about a lot of the stuff that I'm interested in, like crossword puzzles, Greek mythology, literature. Millions of people around the world listen to my music and it's surreal. I've just started living for myself. Harvard Law School was the pressure that I felt from my community and my family and thinking about Survivor and how much emphasis it places on risk taking and being yourself it really made me want to see if I could apply those lessons to this game. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. I'm a little bit of everything. Truck driver, marine from the south. I'm the perfect hodgepodge where I can find something to connect to everyone that I talk to. I just started truck driving after I got out of the Marines, so I've had to sleep outside, you know, for weeks at a time. So the physical side of things don't be as tumultuous on my mind as some of the other characters. I'm really excited to compete at this super high level. I went to college for the heptathlon. So Survivor takes it to a whole nother level where it's not only just my body versus your body, it's my mind versus your mind. It's like the, the Olympics of everything. This is for my family. This is gonna change my life.